And I've only got 1.4 gigs free, holy crap. But you can check it out here. So I'm using an volume check 2.1, volume data check 2.1, volume data 2.1. That's the name of this channel, I think. Check it out, I got a Raspberry Pi 5 server. So I've been wanting to do this for a while because I kind of want to do more videos on how to use an Ubuntu server, especially through command line. So a Raspberry Pi is actually a great way of doing that. So I've got a Raspberry Pi 5 here, eight gigabyte model. That's right, baby, eight gigs. And I've only got 1.4 gigs free, holy crap. But you can check it out here. So I'm using an app. I don't know if, do I call these apps? Docker apps? I don't know. I don't know if that's the right word. Let's just say Docker apps. I'm using a Docker app called Homepage. So if you look that up, you'll get a lot of results that are not related to that. But you can just look up Get Homepage, and that is where you will find this guy. There are a ton of people that run these. If, you're, if you ever look at like the self-hosted subreddit, everyone be showing these off. So yeah, this is my Pi 5. This is what you can run on a Raspberry Pi. So I've been running a Raspberry Pi 4 server for about two years, and I can't remember the last time I've turned it off. So I just wanted to tinker around with a 5 and see what it was like. So I'm running a Minecraft server. I've got Portainer, and you can see I've got 45 containers running, and none of them are stopped. That's right, they're all, they're all going, but that's kind of not true because Airsonic's not going, I know that. But I've got a ton of apps, so I think that there are 12, 24, 36 total going on here. I guess 35 if you don't count Airsonic. But yeah, I can go through and check all these guys out. Let me log into one. Here we go. We got we got fresh RSS here. I can check out all my ESPN news feeds only on the NBA playoffs. That's all that it does. So all these apps are totally capable to run on a Raspberry Pi. Probably the biggest usage user here is gonna be Minecraft. So I've got this, I've got this Minecraft server up and running. That's right, it, it is going. I have dug myself in some dirt so nobody comes to get me. But uh, yeah, you can see it is nighttime. This thing's a kicking. If I go around, I can, oh no, I'm definitely, I shouldn't have gone out of there. If I die and I do a really bad job on this video, I'm gonna have to make myself a dirt path, a dirt house all over again so I don't get killed. But yeah, you can see I'm running this guy off of uh, the pie. Oh man, I'm poisoned. I'm poisoned. This is not, oh, this is not good. Did I run into a witch? Oh, I'm going to die. Oh, I'm going to die. Oh, that's a witch. Oh, that's a witch. I'm at half health. This is not good. But you can see it's actually running pretty well. It's picking up grass when I click on it. I did have a friend try this server out remotely and there's a little bit of lag. That's probably something that I could have tinkered around with to fix up. And I'm running this um, as a per per server, which I've never done before, but Apparently it's like running a paper Minecraft server, but a little bit, a little bit better. So, and I can see here, I've still got 1.4 gigs free. I believe I have it capped at using two or two and a half gigs of RAM. So that's where it's up there. We're using close to 20% CP. It looked like it spiked up there around 30s. But yeah, pretty capable server. I mean, this is running a lot of the heavy hitters. So, you know, you can run Home Assistant. If you want to run a reverse proxy, Nginx Proxy Manager is up and running. The big boy, Pi Hole, very easy to run on a Raspberry Pi, obviously. I got Navidrome. If I want to listen to some tunes, that's probably going to take a little bit to load. It's a little bit bigger one. Check it out. I got Uptime Kuma also so I can see everything that's running. And I'm doing it using a Docker network, which is pretty cool. One day I will do a video on that, specifically with Uptime Kuma, because that seems to be the way to do it. MK Docs, if you're interested in making like a document sort of website, this is the one to do, baby. I think this is what Linux server uses, but a lot of other self-hosted podcast, or not podcasts, a lot of other like self-hosted websites you'll see using something like uh, MK Docs. So yeah, oh, never drums up so you can listen to some Bad Bunny Baby, some ACDC, or yeah, some Common, whatever you want. Navidrome is up and running. So yeah, these are the capabilities of what a Raspberry Pi server can do. If I pop into Terminal, check this out. Actually, here, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna do something better. Putting up a Raspberry Pi server is awesome because it's actually really easy to get Ubuntu on here. There is a program called Pi Imager, and all you have to do, so I know some of you can't read this, but this is basically just saying select your device so I would select a Pi. This is telling me what operating system do I want to put on here. I would say other general purpose, and I typically just go with Ubuntu server. This is just where I always end up at. I'm trying to do Alpine. I really want to do more Alpine server. That'd be awesome. But uh, yeah, and then it's asking me to select storage. But if I select storage and go to the next screen, it actually gives me options to set this up in a couple different ways. Like I can add in a... I can add in the name of my Wi-Fi, the password for my Wi-Fi, and enable SSH and give it a name. So for example, my server's name is actually vd21.local. So what happens is when I plug the Raspberry Pi into a power source, it is it takes a little bit, but after, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes, it's up and running and I can just SSH into the Pi and that's all that there is to it. So I don't have to hook up a monitor, mouse, keyboard, anything like that. I can hook this up to any USB-C power source and it will work. Although I will get a warning message, so check it out. I'm gonna log in here. Very secure password. It's not just four letters. That would be ridiculous. Okay, it's just four letters. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna throw this Pi away, guys. Don't worry, I'm not gonna throw it away, but 
I'm going to nuke it at some point. So you can see here I'm getting a warning that the power supply is not capable of supplying 5 amps. That's because I'm not using the official one. So with a Raspberry Pi 5 especially, you do want to use the, you're supposed to use the official one. If I was running this long term, I probably would. I probably will get one at some point. But uh, yeah, but I can, I'm in here, check it out. I can do Docker, Docker stats. I can see what of my Docker apps is annoying me the most. Now I can just see which ones are taking up the most CPU and RAM. And clearly Minecraft is a little bit of a uh, heavy hitter in this realm. Mealy, you're using up a little bit of RAM there, buddy. Image, you are also using up a little bit. Um, yeah, but you can see what apps are taking up more RAM and CPU usage than others using that way. I can also check this out. LS, CD, app data. If you don't know what I'm doing, I'm just navigating through a folder structure. So I can see all the folders for my Docker apps here. So I can do CD, I don't know, let's try Link Warden. And then Nano, Docker Compose, and you've probably seen this before. That's what we're always copying and pasting when we're working on Synology stuff. So this is just how you can look at it in command line. I'm gonna get out of here. I can just type in ID and get those IDs. I don't have to run a script through Synology. I can just get it right here. I've got my UID and GID, just two letters typed in. So that's pretty nice that you can do that. So the Raspberry Pi is an awesome way. If you want to tinker around with the server, especially if you're kind of new to the whole thing, Raspberry Pi is definitely a great way to get up and running and start using stuff. There's a lot of programs available for it. So your old buddy Volume Data 21 is not a moron. He is kind of stupid, but I am aware that a lot of people think that the Raspberry Pi is a ripoff. And I think that there's kind of good reason for that, especially, well, it seems more it's kind of a ripoff in the server arena because you can get a mini PC for a similar price, especially once you include the price of getting like a, um, an SD card and a case and a power supply. Or if you want to get an NVMe hat, that's also gonna, you're also gonna need to consider that price. I'm gonna argue back on that a little bit though, because first off, using Raspberry Pi Imager to get a Raspberry Pi running is very nice. It's not gonna be that easy on a mini PC. Your mini PC is gonna have, each mini PC is gonna have a different motherboard, which means it's gonna have a different BIOS, it's gonna have a lot of different hardware. So it typically just takes a lot more to get up and running. And then anytime you wanna switch the operating system, you're probably gonna have to hook it up to a monitor and keyboard. You're not gonna be able to let it run in a closet and try and do it that way. Not easily, if you set up a KVM or something, you can definitely do it. But you know, if you're just, if you're in the beginner realm and you're watching my videos, then that's what you're gonna get. Check it out, we can ping this on Wi-Fi. Oh, that's a pretty good Wi-Fi speed. I don't know how accurate that is. I guess it's megabits, so I guess that makes sense. Megabits, that's not too bad, too great, not too bad, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I just, but I really wanted to throw this up too to show you guys what you can do with the Raspberry Pi 5, because a lot of people talk about what you can't do, but there are a lot of programs that you can run with a Raspberry Pi. Personally, I actually have mine running a Home Assistant. It runs Pi Hole. It also runs Mealy and a couple of other apps. I've got it running Pinry, which is like a self-hosted Pinterest. It's super useful. If, you're, if you are not using something like self-hosted, maybe not a self-hosted Pinterest, but whatever Pinterests are out there, I guess the official one might be the only one out there. Pretty, it's pretty nice. Um, Uptime Kuma, I also run, actually, you know, I don't run that, but I do run a reverse proxy on there. And I run LinkedIn. This is Link Warden. I wanted to see what Link Warden was like, but LinkedIn is pretty similar. They just host bookmarks. And I've been running my personal Raspberry Pi. I mean, I guess this is also my personal Pi server, but my long-term one is a Raspberry Pi 4 with four gigs of RAM. And I've been running that for close to two years now and pretty much nonstop. I think I just stopped it. I ran it for a couple months without a case. And eventually I was like, I've been using this long enough. I should put a case on there. So that's what I do now. And there's a couple reasons for that. I also have a mini PC and a Synology NAS. And my mini PC is pretty powerful. It runs my Plex server. Mostly that's what it's for and for gaming servers. So it's also running my, I got like a Minecraft server, Power World server, that kind of stuff. And I think a mini PC is great for that. But here is the issue that I kind of had. I love to tinker with my stuff. And every time that I would tinker with my stuff, my servers have to go down. And that means all of these programs have to go down when I do that. So if I'm, whatever I'm hosting on the mini PC or Synology NAS, depending on who's got to go down, I can't have access to my photos. I can't have access to my bookmarks, Upsnap, sync thing if I want to sync things between things. I guess that makes sense. But like my reverse proxy, Home Assistant, um, those are things that I don't really need to go down. Um, Sterling PDF, if you've never used that, that's a pretty cool one where you can edit PDFs self-hostedly. That was kind of the uh, the genesis of me using a Raspberry Pi server was that I could have a server that's running all the time. And the difference between that and a mini PC, there are a lot of advantages. So the Raspberry Pi 5 is going to use a lot less power. It doesn't dissipate a bunch of heat where, you know, if you're running a computer or an ass in a bedroom or something like that, the heat can get to you. 
Um, but the big, the biggest one is noise and size. Those are two huge ones because it doesn't make any noise and it's the size of a deck of cards and you can just hook it up with USB-C power. So I can put it anywhere. So I just have it in the living room in a media console. And that is super nice for me because it doesn't bother anybody. It's, it's, I don't have to worry about anything that's going on with it. And anytime that I want to like take down my servers, I don't just mean like power them off to install new apps or anything like that. I mean, I might want to reorganize my home lab. If you get a bunch of machines in there, eventually you're like, man, I got too many cables plugged in or too many devices or a bunch of things that I'm not using. And eventually I just like to tear things down and start over every, every once in a while. I don't have to worry about these programs going down. My pie hole is always going to be up. Home Assistant is always going to be up. I can mess with those servers as much as I want and it's not an issue. Because of the size and the noise, because it doesn't make any noise, it was perfect. So I could just put it anywhere. Whereas if I had a second mini PC, I would probably have to worry about where it's going to go. Because even with an NVMe, the problem with a lot of mini PCs ends up being the fan. The fans can get kind of annoying and whiny, and sometimes you can't even replace them. So just one thing to note on the mini PC. There are definitely advantages to having a mini PC. It's going to come with, probably going to come with a lot more storage than a Pi. Pi doesn't come with anything, so you're going to have to get an SD card. Or an NVMe hat if you've got a Pi 5, and you can add it that way, but still, it's probably not going to be cheaper. You can get more RAM. Like, the minimum on a mini PC is probably going to be 8 gigs of RAM, whereas on the Pi, that 8 is going to be your max and you're stuck with it so no upgradeability the pi also runs an arm chip so it can't run as many programs although there are very few programs that are not accessible by a pi you know if you're self-hosting if you're running if you've got a 64-bit version of a pi you're going to be fine with most self-hosted apps power is the big one right because you can do plex transcoding on a mini pc but i don't think the pi 5 supports any sort of plex transcoding i think the previous ones had some sort of thing but you don't have a gpu on here so um or you don't have a good gpu i'm not really sure what the g well it's got to have a gpu but it's not a very good gpu it can't do um quick sync encoding so you're you're losing out on that for transcoding and then for hosting game servers they can get pretty intensive especially for hosting more than one server at a time so you might want that. And if you want to run virtual machines too, that's something you can't really do on a Pi, as far as I know. But you can do that on a, on a mini PC if you are interested in doing that. So a couple things to keep in mind. But, you know, if you're in a situation where, like, you have to choose between one or the other, I'd probably steer you towards a mini PC, um, especially for something long term. But if you're in a situation where you're just thinking about getting one, you want to tinker around with something, or you want to run a server that's not going to bother anybody, that you can just put anywhere and it runs, I mean, you don't even need Ethernet to use a Raspberry Pi server. I would put it with Ethernet, but when you plug in those Wi-Fi credentials on the Pi Imager setup, it's it's just going to be up and running when it's plugged into USB-C. When it's got when it's powered up, you are good to go. I guess USB-B if you're using a Pi 3. But yeah, once it's got power, it's good to go. So a lot to think about there. I wouldn't completely dismiss it. I know that the Pi 5s are a little bit expensive, but the Pis, as they're circulating in the market, they're going to come down in price, especially on the used market. If you can get a Pi, I think it's a great, I think it's a great tool for a lot of self-hosted, a lot of self-hosted folk, especially if you want to tinker around. You're really not going to have an easier time getting an operating system on a device and get to get it up and running. It, it's pretty cool. So yeah, and you know, if, especially if you're in a small place, like if you're in an apartment, or you've got to put a server in a guest room, you know, it might not be bad to have a Raspberry Pi there where it's not going to bother anybody. Yeah, so I just use mine as sort of a stable third server that doesn't do, that just hangs out in the background and is able to be there for me when I need it. Check this out, I got WireGuard on here too. So you can install one of the easiest VPNs out there, WireGuard, and this is called WireGuard Easy. It's a little Docker application. I don't mind, I don't know the guy's GitHub. Somewhere here? Sure is. Here's the GitHub for WireGuard Easy. So you can install this and then you can use QR codes. So don't scan that in and get on my VPN. I know you're thinking that. Don't hack into my system. But you can just download WireGuard on your phone, download the app, take a picture of this QR code or scan the QR code with your photo app and you will just be connected up to your VPN and on your home network and safely VPN in. So cool stuff. So that's just the overview of a Pi server if you're interested in setting one up. But yeah, the plan here is, that, oh no, you're freezing on me. Oh, you're good. The plan here for me is to do a couple more stuff related to using an Ubuntu server. I just think, I think using an Ubuntu server is pretty cool. I've gone through the gamut of servers. Like I've used, what is it, TrueNAS, um, Open Media Vault, Unraid, um, Proxmox. I've tried all of them. I always just end up coming back to Ubuntu server though. It just seems to be the easiest to use. I also like using Alpine Linux. I really like to use Alpine Linux, but... I did find myself being a little limited at times, and I've already got some of these servers up and running, so I don't really want to install a new operating system on them, but I do like to tinker around with it. But le learning Ubuntu commands and learning Linux in general is just so nice for running servers. It, your understanding of how servers work and how everything is going on behind the scenes really helps out. So 
hopefully I will be doing some of those in the future. But yeah, there's my little guide on a Raspberry Pi 5 server. And is volume data 2-1 stupid for thinking that a Pi server is a good idea? Um, a little bit, but actually I think it's...